Hello everybody, welcome back to Screen Stars. I'm here today to bring you my review for the 2023 horror film Haunting of the Queen Mary. The film is directed by Gary Shaw and Rebecca Harris and it stars Alice Eve, Joel Fry, Tim Downey, Neil Hudson and William Shockley. Now the film focuses obviously on the Queen Mary, um, the famous ship. Now it does it in like two time zones, so it tells a story from two different time zones. So it tells a story from back in the 30s when the ship was in its prime. Um, uh, and it tells a story then of what how things go terribly wrong on the Queen Mary back in the day. Uh, there's a lot of murders take place, so on and so forth. And then we also have like, a, um, it jumps forward to the present day. And there is uh, like um, Alice Eve's character and Joel Fry character. They are kind of partners. And she wants to kind of do like this expose on the Queen Mary and, you know, um, do this piece on it. And she wants to kind of bring it back to its glory because it's mainly used for like tourism and things like that. However, um, while she's there with her partner, Joel Fry, and her young son, um, there are some spooky things take place there as well. So it kind of it's two different stories, essentially. Right. What are my thoughts on um, Haunting of the Queen Mary? Well, this is... Um, when I first kind of glanced at this, I thought it was just going to be like a standard, like director streaming, fairly low budgeted type film. And then I was surprised to find out that it's actually a little bit of pedigree, pedigree here. You obviously you've got Alexia, Alice Eve and Joel, Gr and Joel Fry, but the director like Gary Shaw has directed things like Dracula and Told in the, pa in the past as well. So there's a decent amount of pedigree here. Um, and the production values of this film, you know, are probably the, one of the best things about it. I mean, it's filmed very nicely. Um, it looks quite beautiful at times, you know, some clever lighting going on. Um, nice and glossy and shiny and all that kind of stuff. And the, um, the costumes and the production design for the ship when it was, when it's in the past in like 30 sort of thing is very, very good. Um, all looks the part and stuff so that a lot of effort and time has gone into that side of the thing unfortunately the rest of the film just doesn't hold up um, it, it feels disjointed anyway because it's constantly ju jumping backwards and forwards in time it's telling two different stories and that can always be jarring unless the, the, story, the story that it's telling or the narrative is you know fairly simple to follow and unfortunately this one um, it, it really drops that ball narratively. Um, the both could have been interesting stories in their own right. The, the one set in the 30s um, has got a real shining vibe to it. You know, you've got this um, family on the ship that shouldn't really be there. They've kind of, you know, hustled their way on the ship. Um, and then there's, there's quite a lot of celebrities on there. Um, it's one of these, you know, unsinkable ships, you know, the whole Titanic type story. They're going to try to get from A to B in a fast speed and they don't want anything to go wrong. And then obviously creepy things start happening. And then you get this real, um, shining vibe going on with the father of this family that kind of got on the ship. And it follows that story sort of thing. But it doesn't do it in one lump. It just keeps jumping back to it. So you get bits and pieces of the story. Um, and then you've got the modern, uh, the present day story with Alice Eve and Joel Fry. And to me, that is the weakest part of the film. Um, I just didn't click with that at all. It, it, uh, it felt very disjointed and it felt very forced. The, the horror they were trying to inject into that. Um, and it just didn't necessarily make, fence, make sense narratively. Um, she goes to kind of sell this idea to the people um, in charge of the ship initially. And when there's like loads of people there and stuff. And then she gets invited back when the ship is kind of going through like a refit to kind of do her piece on it. And you're just kind of thinking um, that, that doesn't really make sense. Um, how she gets back there um, and you, it's you almost feel like you're missing something uh, why her and Joel Fry go back um, the sum the summit missing it's connected to a sum but you just you just keep thinking to yourself, what have I missed here 
Um, it just doesn't make a lot of sense. And then they get there and loads and loads of creepy stuff start happening. And it just, it just feels like they think the best way to sell this film at this point is just to kind of give us creepy stuff now and again, like hands coming out of phones or, you know, uh, bodies coming out of pools and all that kind of stuff. And you're just kind of thinking, where's this coming from? Um, it just it just feels like it's the, they're just trying to think, right, OK, well, like, we need to get some scary scenes in here to kind of warrant this being a horror. Um, for me, I think the film probably would have worked better if they'd have forgotten about the present day stuff and just focused on the shit back in the 30s. I found that story much more interesting. It was visually more impressive and more interesting to look at. Um, the characters were more in interesting. Um, and there was there was just more to look at visually and enjoy and the sights and the sounds and stuff. And um, like I say, it was, it was really going for a shining vibe. Um, and it, it, for me, it worked. You know, the spooky stuff, I think, it was a little bit more subtle in its approach to, you know, how this guy loses, loses his mind sort of thing and goes on a killing spree to the present day stuff where it just feels like they're going for just the cliches, you know, the haunted house cliches constantly, you know, the lights going off and everything dark and weird things happening and ghosties and, like I say, hands coming out of phones and all that kind of stuff. And it just felt very trite and very forced, the uh, the present day stuff. So it's a very unbalanced film. Um, it's, it's better than I expected, if I'm honest. I thought it was really going to be, you know, a low fare, low budget affair. And it isn't, you know, the, the, I can't fault the performances here, you know. I might not think the characters that Alice Eve and Joel Fry played were particularly interesting, but they played them well. Um, you know, everybody here kind of played the part, and they played the parts well, and they were certainly convincing enough. So there's that side of the production is fine. In front of the camera, behind the camera is all good. It's just the story, if you like, is very unbalanced, disjointed, um, and not particularly... Um, interesting enough to follow so it's it's a horror film really that I think could have done a better job of presenting us with uh, a better haunted tale the idea is good the concept is good I just wish as I've said that they focused more on the um, the past story because for me that was far more interesting than the present story the present story just felt um, like I say, disjointed and forced. Um, and it, it, it almost like they ran out of ideas as well at some point with the present day stuff and just put the, like say, the generic haunted house scares in. So it's not a complete waste of your time. There are some moments here that I think some people will certainly enjoy. But for me, it's just really an average film at best. So thanks for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed this review. I'll be back with more content on the channel very, very soon.